Thanks so much for joining us, Match Day Minus One, at St George's Park. Um, we'll structure this in a couple of different ways. We'll take questions from the room, and then we do have a number of German media um, joining us virtually, so we'll take some questions at the end uh, from our friends from Germany. But, Anton, we'll begin with you. Morning, both. Nice to see Morning. you. Um, look, obviously we saw training on Tuesday, various players at various sort of stages of, uh, sort of recovery. I'm just wondering how the squad is going into this game. Uh, the squad is good. Um, we have two players that are not available for tomorrow. Uh, that's Fran. So we'll be. Um, she has been assessed. She's not ready for Friday. We're trying to get her ready for Tuesday. Um, and Lotte. Lotte's doing really well. She's fully in training, but that has to do with the concussion protocol. Um, with Fran, obviously it's not the first time you've been in this position. How disappointed are you for her? And sort of how many minutes for England does she need to kind of? Because there's so much competition in that midfield position. Yeah, yeah. First of all, of course, she wants to be available so badly, and um, she moved clubs. She has played four, four games now in a row. Uh, and she, yeah, and then unfortunately now she has. A, it's not a big injury, but uh, she, she she will not be, be available tomorrow. Yes, she needs minutes. Yes, she needs to show. Um, but we're here now, and hopefully she gets fit quick and she starts playing again, and then it, the competition is all on. Talk about the competition. You've spoken previously about. You want nice headaches when it comes to, you know, selecting your first 11. Is one of the biggest headaches the person sitting to your right and trying to figure out whether they're picking two centre-backs from when you've got so many in good form, especially Millie and Alex? Yeah, that is absolutely a headache um, uh, because they, they are all, they're really good and really competing for minutes. Um, but yes, that's absolutely the headaches I want to have. And it's a hard decision to make. Leah, how's that? Being in such competition for well, for, your, for the place in the starting eleven at the moment. I think it's been that way since I've been in the England squad. I was once really much on the outside, trying to provide that to the people in front of me and trying to push them, whilst also trying to catch up and um, get on the pitch. And and I don't think that's ever changed. I think we've we've always had a, a very strong unit at England, and I think. I think it's fair to say that that's probably why our output has been successful over the last couple of years because because of how much competition there is. They were just one of us sort of personally, individually, collectively, how difficult the start of the season has, has been. Uh, it's it's been a different uh, start of the season. We've obviously been at club for a long time. Normally we'd have an international window before this, so it's been uh, different in that sense of being being there for so long and being in one place. We're not used to that, uh, but. I think um, results tell a story, but I think uh, the work that I've seen going on, especially from from uh, my club, I can only speak for that. I think you can see again that the level of the whole world of football has gone up and um, everyone's enjoying that challenge and, and things change every year, but this is a Euros year now and everyone's focused on, everyone will have a, a plan for the weekend and a plan for the next year. And I think that's you'll see that sort of iron out over over the next couple of months. I know you're talking from an England perspective, but obviously it's been exceptionally well. It's, it must have been difficult Arsenal this season, considering yeah. obviously you know form and obviously with the Jonas leaving as well. So just what's that been like, sort of you know, as an Arsenal player? Yes, yeah, um, I'm a footballer. There's our job is to win games, and that hasn't happened so smoothly. Like I said, results tell a story. Performance is another thing that you can actually change and affect on a day-to-day -day basis, and. To be honest, I'm, I'm happy to be here in a different environment. I think sometimes that comes at the right time. And I'm, uh, yeah, since I've been here, I've had no contact with, with club and it is quite easy to separate in that regard. How much are you looking forward to, in that case, just getting some minutes in a different environment, potentially, with England this time around? Yeah. Um, well, that's the playing for your country. Everyone plays for a club so they can play for the country. So to be here in this environment is... Uh, refreshing, obviously, it would be natural for that to be the case at this time. Uh, and uh, playing with this team, everyone knows how much we all love it. That's, I think you see that every day from us. So, yeah, I'm no different to that. Thanks, Anton. We'll go across to Emma. Morning, both. Uh, Morning. Yeah, Serena, just to start with you, obviously this is a repeat of the Euro 2022 final. Um, I can imagine that bring back, brings back lots of nice memories for you. Yes, of course. Um, we we'll always cherish that. Uh, that was uh, one of the biggest moments in my uh, career, in my life. 
but now is now. Um, we're moving forward. This is a total different team. Uh, we are with a different team because we moved on to, um, and it's the start uh, into the next Euros next summer. Yeah, and just l looking back at those differences between the last time you met, have you kicked on as much as, as you would have liked? And do you think, obviously, the level of football around Europe has gone up, but, um, yeah, do you think you've gone up with it at the rate that, that you would have liked to? From 22 to now? Well, you always want to go faster. Um, but I think um, the game increased, uh, the level of um, the league increased, international leagues increased, and also international country football increased, developed. Um, so that's what we want, which means that we have to develop too. And there's also some transition in the team, younger players coming in, uh, more experienced players um, trying to help the youngest players so, so we can all at the same page. We just know where we want to be on the 2nd of July. And the first start now after qualifying in July is tomorrow morning, uh, tomorrow evening. <laughs> Otherwise, we're too early. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, Leah, hiya. Um, just to sort of draw on what you were saying to Anton there about obviously what's gone on at Arsenal. Um, like you say, you're in a new environment now, but um, how much does kind of the roller coaster of emotions that you go through at club affect when you then come into the international break and you might be not maybe as full as, of confidence as you might have previously been when you've been obviously having success at, at club? Uh, no difference in the confidence levels. I think, again, I can speak. I'm in that environment. The, the picture that we paint of a situation is potentially different to um, the roller coaster that you speak of. Um, so we're all footballers. We've all been through many, many different scenarios, and now we're here with England, which is... Um, it's been a consistent environment, at least for the last couple of years, so it's, it's nice to be back. And like I say, it's been a long time away. Yeah, and just one um, on Lauren Hemp as well, obviously a player that you've played with at, at England for a few years now. She just seems to be in incredible form at the moment, obviously nominated for the Ballon d'Or Award on Monday. Do you think she can become the best player in the world if, if you don't think she might be that already now? Uh, I think Hempo's always had, since the first time she burst onto the scene, everyone... Uh, identified the talent that she has. Uh, I think she's been in great form. Um, she's been playing really well. She looks happy, uh, which is what I care about as a teammate. Um, and I've always said I'm glad she plays for my team and I'm glad I get to play for her when I play with England. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks so much. Uh, hi, Serena. Hi, Leah. Um, Serena, we've talked quite a lot about how these friendlies gives you a chance to experiment and maybe try some new things, but... How important is it to experiment in this game specifically in the sense that it's against a world-class opponent, a rival for the Euros, and in a massive stadium? Just how important is it to use those characteristics to, to experiment within that? Yeah, I, I, I just look at the, the bigger picture first. So we have four friendlies, and in these four friendlies, there's two windows. We can try out things, hopefully as many players available that we want to pick for the team. Uh, and yes, then it's really important to have this occasion too against Germany, top, top level team at Wembley uh, to try out things, um, yeah, to get information about us as a team, where we are right now and our individuals moving forward. And we know about kind of 54,000 tickets have been sold for this game, which obviously in the grand scheme of things is a fantastic number, but represents a slight decrease in kind of recent games at Wembley. Does kind of like English women's football essentially needs like another moment or just something to keep sustaining that growth so we stay on that upwards trajectory? Yeah, I, I don't see it as a real negative. I, it's really positive now that um, in this ne next two windows we play at Wembley twice. So we've already over 100,000 mm. fans coming to the stadium. And I think that's really good. That comes with the growth of the game. And yes, of course, Wembley can... Uh, have more people there. The capacity is bigger than 55,000. So hopefully more people will come too. But we're thinking big um, and showing that we want everyone to have the opportunity to come to the game. And I think we're pretty lucky and happy with already the amount of people that come to the game. And hopefully we can also, with the way we play, um, keep moving forward. And when we have the next opportunity that we play at Wembley two times in a row, that we get us all out. Uh, similar, sell, sell out. <laughs> similar question to you, Leah. Are you happy with kind of the rate of growth of the game still, or do we need a bit more? Yeah, I think if uh, you take a, the perspective on it, 
to play two games so close to one another at Wembley Stadium three, four years ago, it, there's no way it wouldn't have happened like this. So, yes, it doesn't look as glamorous to say 54. It's still a lot more than I presume most countries will host. Um, and we're always, you know, we're not, it's not silly. We have a vision and as a, a an English footballing nation, I think we've always dreamt the biggest, I'm fair to say. Uh, but yeah, I think it's a it's a step in the right direction, um, and hopefully, as Serena says, the way we play tomorrow um, brings more people in for the next game and the next game. Um, that's our job. And kind of almost with that in mind, like obviously it's Germany at Wembley, so naturally we're all talking a bit about the Euro 2022 final. But is, is there any part of you that's almost tired of talking about that, and that it's like time to fully look forward? I'll never get tired of talking about it, of course not, but uh, we have a, a new job, a new focus and a completely different tournament to play, so it's it's exciting and obviously it's good memories. I'm, I'm sure there's many people that will be in the stadium tomorrow that would have wanted to be there two years ago, um, so it's it's lovely, it's a great memory, I'll never stop talking about it, but we played tomorrow, somebody that won it, you can correct me, seven times in a row or something crazy, yeah. you know, so we have one, they have many um it's a great fixture and then we look forward to the next tournament Ooh, and just lastly Serena since we spoke to you last week obviously Lauren James has pulled out of the squad um and with the timeline that Sonia gave it seems like she might not be in the next squad for November either is it at all concerning that like her as such a young player that's still developing with you might not have played for England until for about 10 months by by the time February rolls around yeah, of course. Um, it would be nice to, for her to be fit. That's that's the main thing. She, we know she's a very talented player. Uh, unfortunately, she's injured now, so she's yeah working on a recovery now, and hopefully she'll come back. Uh, she's in a great environment at club, uh, so as soon as she gets fit and she gets at her level, and get the playing minutes, uh, then she then she shows quality because that's the quality that Chelsea plays. And from there, we, we'll we'll see again how the competition goes in between. Okay. Hi, Sandra. Hi, Serena. Hi, Ali. I hope you're both Hi. well. Um, I just wanted to ask you, Serena, just what are your thoughts on the kind of challenge that Germany will pose to England? And how, how do you feel about how England are since that moment two years ago? Yeah, there was uh, you know, so many things have happened to the team. Uh, so, so from the Euros, Finalissima, uh, World Cup, then uh, the Nations League started. So many, many things happened. If I see, if I approach the game for tomorrow, I think Germany has always been a very powerful, a powerful team, uh, very physical too. Uh, want to play the game, want to play possession game, but don't uh, hesitate to play the long ball uh, either. Um, and we have to prepare for that. Also, they have a new coach now, so pr they probably do some other things too. So that's a challenge for us and a nice challenge because. Um, yeah, we don't exactly know what they will do tomorrow, uh, but we're prepared for, for everything. Uh, but that's really good for us to get that experience tomorrow too, at the highest level. And for you, I mean, to be starting the, your kind of build up to trying to retain the Euros title with them in particular, I mean, and, and also obviously with South Africa next week. I mean, what, what do you, why those opponents in particular? Yeah, we want to play the highest level opponents because that shows exactly what we're doing well and what we have to do better. Um, it's also good. We hardly have the opportunity to play friendly, so that's also why it's so important that we qualify for the Euros. Um, why do we play then the South African team? They always play a little different with their style, a different identity, and we want to play that too. Um, so that's two total different opponents at a high level who can where we have to be at our best to, to be successful. And that's the same, of course, with, uh, with the November-December uh, window. Thanks. And for you, Leah, obviously, Germany, we saw, you know, you mentioned two years ago is two years ago, but for you, what does it mean to be facing them again at Wembley in this, and building up to trying to retain the Euros? Yeah, the, um, we were two of the best teams in the tournament back then. It was a great fixture. It's the same now. Germany's a high-level opponent. As Serena says, we want to play the best. We want to expose ourselves, uh, so to speak, and hopefully have good things to talk about as well. So um, it's a, 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 another great occasion at Wembley Football, uh, England, Germany. It's an iconic fixture, uh, and the quality on the pitch hopefully will test us, um, and we can show, show ourselves as well. Thank you. Thank you.
Thanks, Andrew. We'll go to Tom. Uh, good morning, both. Thank you for your time. Um, Georgia Stanway was joking that she was going to be busy in the team meeting. Serena, did you have lots of questions for her about the Germany squad? Yeah, we had some conversations. So uh, she's an expert. Um, yeah, and she wanted to uh, get involved too. That's um, yeah. We are, of course, we have conversations with players in the meetings uh, if they can help us. Sometimes players know more than we do uh, because they are in the dressing room. Um, so yeah, that was. Uh, well, m let's see tomorrow. Is that the information <laughs> she has? If that's if that's if that's um, that uh, is that going to happen? If that's going to happen in the game too? But please, yeah. can I also ask you about your other midfielders and maybe just how much you've been like purring at how well Grace Clinton and Jess Park have been playing? Like you must be absolutely thrilled with their form. And does it give you another headache in midfield selection-wise tomorrow? Yeah, competition. Yeah, as we spoke about other players too, the competition is really high, and everyone really wants to show and wants to. Uh, wants to earn minutes, um, so yes, that's really good. Um, headaches, we want to try out some things. Um, and yes, after these four windows, uh, two windows and four games, of course we approach every game to win, but we can try out things. And then hopefully in December gives us a lot of information while we also know there's still then six, seven months to go and things can change very quickly in football. Please may I also ask both of you a question about the last week or so. I'm wondering what it's felt like, given how much the nation celebrated your success at the Euros, seeing so many people saying it shouldn't be a, a non-English manager managing the men's team. Like As, as a, a, a foreign-born coach who's doing well with England, what's that felt like, Serena? And also for Leah, what's that been like reading that when we've also celebrated Serena's success here? I think, firstly, you can't pick and choose when it suits us just based on the result. Um, obviously, we've had... Great times with Serena. I think she's an honorary Brit now, anyway, right? Like, um, still learning. <laughs> yeah, the slang. She's not quite up to scratch, but um, yeah, I, I, you know, I think England teams want to win, and the best coach would always be appointed. But I know that there is so much, as you know, we're across um, all the plans of the FA and the women's game, especially. Um, there's so many opportunities. I can't speak for the men's game for English coaches, uh, and more and more opportunities are coming up. So um, it's not really my place to speak on on managers, but I know that we've all been very happy with with Serena. You want an answer from me? Yeah, I just wonder what it's what it's felt, <laughs> yeah. what it's felt well, like yeah, for I, you. I, I'm just really happy that I was appointed, and I'll give my everything. <laughs> I'll give my everything, and uh, and uh, I'm totally convinced that's what Tom Suk is going to do too. He's very committed. He has shown uh, how good a coach he is. And I hope he will bring success uh, for England. Thank you both very much. Good luck. Thanks, Tom. We'll take a few questions online from our friends from Germany. Um, if you do have a question, please raise your virtual hand um, and introduce yourself with your name and the outlet you work for. If there are any questions, please raise them now. Very quiet, so we can take a final couple of questions from the room. Um, um, Georgia was saying that you can see Serena from the stage. <laughs> yeah. She was saying that if the day before when you win, that can't be cured of by your side, I'd say I know Georgia probably one of the best in the squad and uh, I still don't know if I'd let her do it <laughs> to me um, but I have seen her work and it's pretty impressive so um, who knows who knows I'm sure she would have a cue thanks Sandra we do now have a question um, from Christopher so Christopher if you take yourself off, off mute and introduce yourself with your name and your outlet that'd be great hi hello I was a little too slow thank you for talking to us uh, it's Christopher Klein I think German television and radio I have a question for Serena I'm not sure is it possible to get uh, a few thoughts on German or in German on the German squad from you? But uh, in German, besides the, yeah, in German. <laughs> besides the besides the language topic, I just want in general to know or to get something to know about your view on the German squad, given what you already said: new manager, new players, and the last uh, fixture is uh, two years away now. What what has changed in your opinion on the German squad? Yeah, I think uh, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll answer in English or Dutch if you prefer that. But my German oh, is not no good chance. enough. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, the thought, yeah, a new coach. Uh, we know uh, of the coach that he worked for for over ten years for the for the federation. 
uh, was very successful in the pathway for, uh, for the boys. Um, so we actually, we, we know a lot about German, but we do think they might change a couple of things for tomorrow night. So that's what we're preparing for, that we can adapt very quickly in what they do. Um, and, and yeah, just the things I just said, Germany has always been a very powerful team, very physical, high levels, want to play possession game, but don't hesitate to, to play the long ball too, uh, with players that have dribble really, um, really fast. Um, yeah, and all, yeah, so for us, we have to be at our top level to, um, yeah, to, to, to be successful. And that's, we expect that tomorrow too, it's just the shape and some, they probably do some tweak some things, but they haven't played uh, after the Olympics with, uh, with the new coach, so we'll see tomorrow. And if I may uh, ask uh, as well, how do you rank the German squad and the scale of opponents? Because it was like a roller coaster the couple of years we, we saw now with the, uh, obviously the final at the Euros, but then early knockout at the World Cup. Now you got the bronze medal at the Olympics. It was kind of a roller coaster. Is Germany still, in your opinion, let's say one of the three or five best teams uh, in, in the world alongside with the Lionesses? Absolutely. They're absolutely the top. Uh, a top team. They've showed that this summer too. It, it also shows when you look over time that, of course, it's never ever take for granted that um, that you're at top level. It's hard to to come there. It's hard to stay there, and the part never goes this way in development. Um, and and I think the game is uh, developing so quickly. Other countries are developing quickly. Uh, competitions are developing, what I just said, also the introduction of the Nations League. It's hard, it's tough. You have to show up every single day, every single game. Uh, and they're really back on it, I think. Uh, that's what they've showed this summer too. So absolutely a top level team. Thank you. Thanks, Christopher. And thanks to you all. We'll see many of you at Wembley tomorrow. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.